Hello everyone and a happy Wednesday to you. I hope that you're having a great week. I had a very, very full day of ministry. Um, this morning we had our Lenten study on Adam Hamilton's book, The Way. And this week we are talking about the healing ministry of Jesus. I think I said that in the previous devotional. But I loved the companion DVD that comes with the study because it shows you the Holy Land and Pastor Hamilton takes you to the sites. And so you're not just reading the book and there's not even just photographs, but there is video footage of um, Adam walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And so for this week, when we talk about the healing ministry that Jesus did, um, we get to go to the ancient city of Capernaum on the Sea of Galilee, and this was where Jesus was kind of headquarters were. Um, Jesus spent so much of his ministry in Capernaum at uh, Simon Peter's house and uh, healed Peter's mother-in-law. And so in the devotional tonight, um, it is just so wonderful to get to see um, how they have continued um, holding that place sacred even until now uh, there are Franciscan uh, priests who take care of the ancient archaeological site of Capernaum and they just can feel the presence of Jesus there and so tonight we'll be talking about um, the healing ministry that Christ did while he was on earth and particularly when he healed Peter's mother-in-law so our scripture is from Luke 4 and it's verses 38 through 40. After leaving the synagogue in Capernaum, he entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever and they asked him about her. Then he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her. Immediately after, or immediately she got up and began to serve them. Talk about hospitality. As the sun was setting, all those who had any sickness, any kinds of diseases at all, were brought to Jesus, and he laid hands on each of them and cured them. So I just love that Peter's mother-in-law had this horrible high fever, and he cured her. And again, a high fever back in the ancient world totally could have killed her. And so Jesus heals her, and she immediately gets up and is hostess. I mean, if that is not a story about an amazing woman, I don't know what is. Um, so here are the words of Adam Hamilton for today's devotional, The Gentle Healer. Simon's house in Capernaum was converted to a church during the early centuries of the Christian faith. You can see the ruins of this home and the church that was built over it. His home, this home that they built a church over, was likely the house where Jesus stayed during his entire time when he was in Capernaum. Upon entering the house following his first Sabbath service in Capernaum, Jesus found Simon's mother-in-law suffering from a high fever. Have you suffered from a high fever? I recently had my appendix removed because it was on the verge of rupturing. The night before finally going to the doctor, I laid in bed shaking and suffering with a high fever. The fever continued after surgery, keeping me in the hospital for several days. Though my illness was relatively minor compared to many, by the third night, I was more than ready to be done with it and to sleep in my own bed. That day in Capernaum, as Jesus stood over Simon's mother-in-law, he told the fever to leave, and with his words, the infection in her body was destroyed. Her fever dissipated. She got up and began to care for Jesus and the other guests. I love this. Jesus spoke. The bacteria was banished, and the virus, the virus vanished. That night, people from all around the countryside brought their sick to Simon's house, and Jesus touched each of them and healed them. He stayed up all night long healing them. This episode tells us, among other things, that Jesus was filled with compassion for the sick. Today, Jesus' primary instrument of healing is still through human touch. 
by doctors and nurses, physical therapists, I would even add licensed therapists, um, psychiatrists. Before going in for surgery on my appendix, I asked the surgeon if I could pray for him. I took his hand, thanked him for his compassion and care for the sick, and then prayed. Lord, thank you for Dr. McCroskey. I pray that you would use him to bring healing to my body. Bless him and help him as he seeks to help me. In Jesus' name, amen. In the end, he removed my appendix, treated my infection, and three days later, I was home and feeling great. God used him, my doctor, as an agent of healing. Those in the medical professions, doctors, nurses, hospital technicians, therapists, I would add social workers, all follow in the footsteps of Jesus and the work that they do. The stories of Christ's healing ministry point to his compassion for the sick. When you are sick, know that he is always near. Christ is always near. And pray for your doctors and nurses because their instruments he most often uses to bring healing to our bodies. So obviously at this point, you know that Russ and I are undergoing IVF and we are in the midst of in vitro fertilization. This has been over two years of an infertility journey that we have been on. And I have to tell you that it means everything to me knowing that our doctor, who is a reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist, is also a Christian. Um, I love that she loves Jesus. I love that she goes to church. I love that she's a woman of faith. And I love that at least the majority of the nurses um, that are in the facility are also believers as well. Um, I think it's one thing to have all of the medical knowledge and to, again, be a specialist, but I think it's a completely different thing to also know that at the end of the day, um, there are just miracles that happen and it doesn't matter how much um, you can know, there's just things that only God can do. And I was telling somebody today, knowing all that I know, obviously now about infertility, it's kind of just like a miracle when anyone gets pregnant at all. Um, Cause there's just so many things that can go wrong. And so I love this idea of praying with my doctor um, and just, asking God to use her as a healing agent um, when we have our embryo transfer at the end of the month. And I am going to take Adam Hamilton's lead on this and I am going to do that because I think it is a wonderful thing to remember that, you know, back in the ancient world, they obviously didn't have the medical advancements that we have today. They just didn't, they didn't have any of it. Um, and now we have so much and the Lord is in all of it. Um, so whatever you are going to the doctor for next, um, whether it's going to the dermatologist because you need a mole checkup or you're going in for your annual mammogram or you are seeing a specialist like I am for something in particular that you are suffering some sort of ailment, um, I would encourage you to start praying for your doctor and the nurses and the medical team and pray that the Lord would just continue to use them as healing agents for you and for all of the other people in their practice. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.